first batch of cases was identified in December 2019 from a wet market in Wuhan, China. In the initial weeks, clear data was hard to gather because of the relatively unknown nature of the virus. But towards the end of January, most countries had started testing for cases and were maintaining infection data. Hi, I'm Jami Malik and I'm going to take you through some data to tell you how we got better at saving lives from COVID. Before I go any further, let me explain what these axes mean. On y-axis, we have the case fatality rate. Now this is an important term. It refers to the proportion of people who have died among confirmed infections. And on x-axis, we have active COVID cases, which shows the volume of people currently infected in a country. As active cases increase, countries will move on the right. And as they bring their outbreak in control, they will drop to the left. Countries will start appearing on this graph as they report COVID-19 deaths and you will see how disease progresses through, across the globe through the year. At the start, around 2-3% to of all cases were dying in China. This is the CFR number that was widely regarded as the impact of the disease in the initial weeks. We see that China starts climbing on y-axis as the healthcare system in the country gets overloaded. By March, China stops moving to the right as it brings its outbreak in control. India also emerges on the chart here on March 11th. India will throughout remain one of the best performing countries in terms of saving lives. Europe, however, was a different matter altogether. Here, we also see that the outbreak in Italy starts spiraling out of control as it becomes one of the most fatal COVID nations in the world. By May, China's numbers start getting dwarfed by what is happening in the West. America and Europe are now the world's biggest hotspots. More than 67,000 people have already died in the US, and twice as many have died in Europe. At this point, only 1,200 deaths have been reported in India. In nations like France, nearly 20% of all people getting infected are dying, while 10% are dying in Italy. At this point, the global CFR is the highest it's ever been, more than 7%. By now, the virus has been active for 5 months in the world and most countries have learned a good deal about the treatments that work, and more importantly, those that don't. From here, things start getting better for the first time. Through these months, Europe brings its first wave under control, and we see countries such as France and Italy move to the left, slowly but steadily. In this period, Brazil gets close to the United States as the country with the biggest outbreak. India isn't too far behind either. Keep an eye on these three nations because they will dominate world figures from now on. By mid-September, 4 out of every 10 people dying in the world is in these three nations. From here, we start seeing the bunching up of all countries along the 2-6% to 6 CFR mark. 9 months in, treatments are getting better. And in Europe, where the maximum number of deaths were reported in the first wave of the pandemic, most countries have brought the situation somewhat under control for now. Any country with a CFR under 2%, like India here, is performing well and anyone above 3% can be considered doing poorly. Mexico and Italy are the only major outliers at this point. By the end of October, all countries except Mexico have gathered around the 3% CFR mark. Which means that Mexico still has a very high death rate, while others seem to have brought it under control. India now starts sliding to the left as it brings its outbreak under control. Meanwhile, a second wave again makes France, Italy, climb charts and accompany the United States on the right. Globally, we've got one of the best mortality rates ever recorded and only 2.3% of all cases have died till date. Given the nature of the coronavirus, there is still a lot that we don't know about it. For instance, we don't know how many people have actually been infected. Many infections, after all, may have never been detected at all. And they may have transmitted the disease to others, which caused more deaths than have been counted. Which means that we still don't have an actual idea of how many people died or were infected throughout the world. But based on the knowledge that we built through the year, we saw countries getting better at detecting the virus, preventing its spread, reporting deaths and later preventing them. So yes, we did get better at saving lives.